Alexa project. Franz! Franz! Aretha, why are you here? Because Elise told me what you guys were doing. I didn't want to make Aretha and Alanis worried, so I stopped by their house to let them know. And then I followed Elise here. <laughs> Lord Godwin comes forward. Thank you for locating my fool of a son. How was he? As far as I could tell, Frederick wasn't in immediate danger. Have you notified the police? Hey, kid. We meet again. Huh? Isn't that the policewoman Elise and I met the other night? I've heard about what happened from your... sister. <laughs> she smirks at me when she says sister. I don't think I've introduced myself properly. I'm Janice Wolf, commander of Overture Police's Dragoon Unit. Dra Dragoon? Did Lord Godwin just call the commander of Overture's most elite special forces unit to his house? Nice to meet you, Commander Wolf. My name is Fr- So what'd you hear from them, kid? Huh? Your sister told me that you'd stayed behind because you wanted to eavesdrop on Libertad's meeting. Who'd you see? Fyodor Hendricks? Gasung Alicia Bona? Yes. Both Hendricks and Gasung were there. Those were the only two names I caught. The woman turns her head, only slightly, just enough to glimpse at Lord Godwin with one eye. You're right, Joff. This is a big catch. I wouldn't have called you otherwise. Huh. <laughs> she looks back at me, her face stern. And what was the meeting about? They were talking about starting a revolution. They want to bring down the monarchy and create a proletariat government. <laughs> I knew Libertad was up to no good. They're too organized to be your average circle jerk of mana potion thieves. Joff, I can't use my dragoon unit without the king's approval. But I'll go gather some boys and commence the operation in 30 minutes. I understand. I'm counting on you, Janice. <laughs> Consider it done. The Dragoon Commander gives the Lord a quick nod and leaves. Lord Godwin turns to the rest of us. Now, all of you go home. The police will take care of the rest. Yes, my Lord. Let's go, Franz. Yeah, let's go. Hmm, I'm tired too. Let's go home. No, we're not going home. We're not going home. Huh? We'll go to Maison de Beauvoir. To Maison de Beauvoir. Huh? I don't know how exactly they managed this, but I'm now back at Maison together with Elise and Aretha. The atmosphere has completely changed. The proles that were singing and dancing outside are no longer in sight. There are no more voices coming from the house. Instead, there's a swarm of several dozen mages in overture police uniforms surrounding Maison de Beauvoir. A chair-shaped one-seater carriage, the trademark mount of a dragoon, descends in front of Maison's front door. Commander Wolf! The woman jumps off her flying chair and lands in one graceful movement. You shouldn't be here, kid. What happened here? How was Frederick? We underestimated the Liebertons, I guess. We wanted to approach quietly and take them by surprise. But when we were still a mile away, a Lieberton saw us flying and fired a fireball to the sky. Two seconds later, we saw another fireball in the distance and then another one even further away. And then we realized it was their way of relaying an alert. So we dispensed with stealth and got here as fast as we could. We were able to apprehend some Libertans who were fleeing Maison, but a few of them are still holed up inside. I believe Hendrix and Elysia Bana are both still in there. Frederick Godwin is too, so basically we're now at a stalemate. We can't storm in because they've got a hostage. They can't escape because they're surrounded. If I had my dragoons, this would be over in five minutes. But as far as the King's concerned, this is just your standard rescue operation so I'm stuck with your standard-issue police officers. What are you planning now? Frankly, that's none of your business. But don't worry, I'll get your friend out even if I have to go in there by myself. Are you sure? 
I heard their leader Hendrix is very powerful. <laughs> Hendrix? <laughs> Compared to you, I'm sure he is. Well, if you're that confident, I guess there is no problem. Fyodor Hendrix is about as good as your average Dragoon. Not something to sneeze at, but I'm not worried about him. It's Kasung Alijabana who might ruin my night. Mages in the police force's Dragoon unit are chosen among the most elite of mages. But Wolf is saying Gasung is even better than those mages. Hard to imagine that kind of power. Yes, so. Wolf looks at Elise piercingly. You saw his magic too, didn't you? You must already have some idea of how powerful that big bastard is. But Gesung is not a bad guy. <laughs> uh, listen to me, little girl. In the battlefield, there's no good guys and bad guys. There's you and there's them. Can you beat this Gesung guy? I don't know. In one-on-one -on -one combat, maybe. But if Hendrix joins in, I doubt it. Why don't you bring some policemen in with you? You little twerps are full of questions, aren't you? Oh, wait, how about this? You fight them to buy some time for a cop to free the hostage. The commander glares at us, but at last, <sighs> she rolls her eyes and sighs. Here's the deal. Apparently, little Lord Godwin is in the basement. Problem is, apparently none of the officers here have ever frequented this particular maison. It's a big place and we don't know where to find him. Franz and I know. Franz and I know exactly where Frederick is being kept. We can free Frederick while you're fighting. For a moment, it looks like Wolf is going to shoot down Elisa's idea. But then she pauses, her mouth dangling open as she contemplates silently for a few seconds, until finally she speaks. And here I thought you were going to keep holding out on me. Listen, I don't like putting civilians at risk, but this is the best plan we have. You two are the only people here who have been inside and who we can trust. But are you brats sure you're comfortable with the risks? Yeah. Count me in. I'm not very... Uh, well, I'm already here. I guess I might as well. <laughs> That's the spirit. The commander approaches the Maison's front door. She asks without turning to look at us. Ready? Yes. Casually, Wolf swings her left arm up, with the insouciance of a man flinging an empty potion bottle into a trash can. Even so, that lazy movement snaps the door off its hinges and sends it speeding through the air until it slams into the wall at the far end of the lobby. Go! She dashes inside, as customers and prostitutes scramble in panic. Inside. A mob of maybe 20 Libertad members close in on Wolf from every direction. Without batting an eyelash, she raises a finger and casts a spell. Amplify summon! The air inside Maison suddenly grows dark and heavy. From the ceiling, many crackling balls of lightning materialize and beeline at the Libertans, instantly incapacitating them. They drop to the floor like flies. An amplified thunder, or thunderstorm, is an extremely powerful magic spell. I can take down a battalion of unprepared magicians in an instant. When the thunderstorm subsides, no more Libertins are standing. In fact, I'm not sure whether they are still breathing. But there's no time to admire a magic spell. So, Elise, Aretha, and I rush to the basement. And before we can reach the stairs, however, our path is obstructed by the bulky man from the meeting. Be gone. You are not welcome. Lady Elise, well, this is a surprise. Stop this, Gesung. What you're doing is wrong! What do you know of right or wrong, young lady? Do you even know what we are doing? No, I don't. But whatever it is, please stop! The proles don't have to fight against the bourgeois. I am one of the proles too, but I have hope because I have magic. Gesung. Magic is not about casting fire or water or wind or quake. Being able to cast magic means being able to dream. Having magic means having hope. All we have to do is hold on to that hope. To our magic. I agree, Lady Elise. That's why we're doing this. We want to create a world in which everyone can have mana. We want everyone to be able to dream. 
No, that's not what I mean. I... Summon! While Elise is still hesitating, a boulder as big as Gasong's brawny upper body and engulfed in a fireball flies by from behind us and onto the muscular mage. Urgh! But Gasong promptly expels raw mana to form a barrier around his body. The flaming rock dissipates upon contact, as though it were made of sand. Little girl, what I tell you about good and bad in a battlefield? <laughs> Get the hostage, now! Okay. We leave the Dragoon Commander as she lunges at her large enemy. Yet, just when we were about to arrive at the door to the basement... Summon! The door bursts into flames and melts into a firewall. From the blazing firewall emerges a figure. Theodor Hendricks, the leader of Libertad. With no words, he rushes to me with extended arm. Summon. From which hand comes forth a raging gale of wind. Not knowing what to do so suddenly, I counter with my own wind magic spell. Summon! The opposing gusts of wind clash between the two of us, but his spell is stronger. I'm overpowered and thrown backwards. Ah! I try to ignore the pain as I land. Hendrix will waste no time in finishing me off. This is not a sorcerer match. Still on my back, I reflexively hold my hands out. Sure enough, Hendrix is already standing over me with a right hand aflame. Summoned! I unleash another gust of wind to blow the fire away from Hendrix's hand. Well, well. You're better than that Godwin kid. I scramble backwards and manage to get back to my feet before Hendrix strikes again. Franz, are you alright? You two go and rescue Frederick. What? Go now! Not a chance, girls. I aim a hand at the Libertad leader when he glances at the girls as they run away. Summon! A jet of water shoots at Hendrix. He sees it coming and sidesteps the attack. That was the idea, though. The jet of water continues moving on its path until it strikes the firewall. The door to the basement! Let's go, Elise! Follow me! We have to leave Franz, but I'm worried about him. Guessing is supposed to be the strongest magician here, but Guessing at least has kind eyes. The one Franz is fighting must be the one they call Hendrix. Aretha and I dash through the burned wall and down to the basement. We have to work fast. Franz won't be able to last long against that Hendrix man. I run ahead of Aretha and find the room where Frederick is being held. Outside the room, however, we're met with a surprised, but... Strangely enough, not hostile. Scowl of a Libertad member. What are you girls doing down here, huh? Didn't you hear Madame Beauvoir warn you girls to evacuate Maison? Huh? Madame who? Psst, Aretha. I think he's mistaking us for prostitutes. Oh, I see. No, mister. We didn't hear Madame's warning. At the time, the two of us were... Oh, don't make me say it, you naughty you. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you girls get out of here? It's, it's dangerous. But it's so frightening in the lobby. There's this muscular guy, and he's so big. You know, I'm scared of things that are too big. And then there's this other man who's squirting fire from his hand. Why is he doing that? It's making me so hot. Actually... It's made us both pretty hot, if you know what I mean. Uh, um... Aretha places a hand on the man's shoulder. She continues talking to the man, but looks at me from the corner of her eyes. Maybe you could help us cool down, mister. She winks at me when she says cool down. Taking the hint, I put a hand on the man's other shoulder, gaze at his face, and say in my cutest voice, Please. Ignoring the man's flushed face, I give Aretha a nod and... Summon. Nullify! <laughs> the man is encased in a huge block of ice, a combination of Aretha's water and my freeze spell. 
His body is tense, but his blinking eyes and quivering lips are signs that he's alive. I think we shouldn't leave him frozen for more than a couple of minutes, though. <laughs> I've always wanted to cast that spell. Aretha, it's scary how good you are at seducing men. Oh, you know, I practice on Franz all the time. What? Uh, uh, Franz? Does he know? <laughs> Maybe we should talk about this later, Elise. Right. We run past the ice man to the door behind him. The door's still locked, so I touch the door's wooden surface. No use in keeping quiet now. Summon! The door is swallowed in flame. Next is Aretha's turn. Summon! She douses the fire with water coming out of her hand. Frederick! Frederick looks up. He's on guard. He must have thought Libertad was coming to take him away, but then his face softens when he realizes he's being rescued. Frederick, you're hurt! I place a finger on his forehead and let compassion swim through the mana in my body. Over these last four days, I've cast the spell on torn sheets of paper, shards of glass, a dented plate of aluminum, a partially sawn wooden plank, a dozen cracked eggs, a poor teddy bear with its head ripped off, a half-eaten slice of pizza, and of course, my broken piano. Amplify! It worked. Frederick's bruises and cuts fade with the light of my magic. We've managed to rescue Frederick, but we're not safe yet. We still need to get out of Maison des Beauvois. And although his wounds are healed, I don't know if Frederick has any mana in him to fight. And Franz is still fighting Hendrix upstairs. What should we do? Help Franz, of course. Th thank you, Elise. I'm thrilled to see Elise and her friend, but I still can't look my rescuer in the eye. What happened at the factory is still fresh in my mind. We have to go help Franz. He's fighting someone from Libertad. Yeah, Commander Wolf is also up there. We have to help both of them. Wolf? That horrifyingly strong woman is here? Whew. That was close. You know Commander Wolf? Y yes Wow. You personally know the commander of the Dragoon. Guys, let's talk about this later. Uh, you're right. Let's go help Franz and Commander Wolf. Well, if you ask me... Frederick, behind you! I turn around at the girl's sudden exclamation. There's a man coming at me, ready to attack. But his movements are rigid and slow. In fact, he's shivering. Without lifting a finger, I nullify the gravity under his feet. The nullification only happens for an instant but it's enough to give his stride enough force to send him tumbling through the air past me. The man slams into the floor behind Elise and Aretha. I continue forward without checking on him. The impact should have knocked him out cold. Wow. Cool. Nice one. I should try that sometime. Oh. Is that girl also gifted in willpower? Let's go upstairs. I lead the two girls to the staircase. When I take a step, my foot makes a spattering sound on a puddle of water. Why is the floor so wet here? Leaving the basement, we enter a lobby that's been transformed into a battleground. The beauty versus the beast. With no spells in the air, these two look human. But make no mistake, here be monsters. And suddenly, the battle begins again. Amplify Summon! Fire Tornado. A combination of tornado, amplified wind, and fire. Amplify! Ice Storm. An amplified ice, itself a combination of water and freeze. Amplify Summon! Tsunami. A combination of fluid, amplified water, and quake. All of these are high-level combo <laughs> magic spells that normally require two magicians to cast, but these two monsters can cast them quickly and in succession. 
I mean, I know that a magician has two hands, so it's possible to cast a combo magic spell by oneself, as long as the magic formula doesn't consist of more than two first level invocations. But in practice, it's extremely Sorry. difficult to pull off. And they make it look so effortless. And casting isn't their only forte. They can also dodge. And they must dodge. At this level of magic, it doesn't matter how strong a barrier you shield yourself with. You're done for if you're hit even once. A fight like this, then, is over at the first clean hit. A sudden death match. Stay put, you little rat! The two majors are still at it, casting spell after spell without stopping. When they're not casting a spell, they run, Sub jump, dive, yeah. roll, and do pretty much everything that needs doing to get out of harm's way. And then they cast another spell. Amplify summon! This would look like a magic show. An acrobatic spectacle they perform in sorcerer stadiums out of season. Except those shows are performed by dozens of mages. Here, there are only two. Two demons, <laughs> who process mana into deadly, but beautiful elements, and keep on until it seems like they must be completely drained. And then, they cast some more. Frederick, can we do something to help Commander Wolf? Uh, right. I'll do... Press something. four! Yeah. My knees are shaking. What is there to do but marvel and tremble in the presence of such behemoths? I aim my right hand at the man, and collect my willpower at my palm. But what, exactly, should I do? Attack him? What if he counters? That man could kill me with a flick of his finger. The muscle man springs forward at his female opponent, with a startling speed for someone his size. Intelligence and courage are focused in his hands. <laughs> Nullify! The temperature drops in an instant, and freezing rain starts to pour down on Wolf. A single drop of the magical rain would freeze human skin. But the woman moves with inhuman swiftness as well, avoiding the freezing rain while sprinting towards her foe. She is glowing with courage. <laughs> Sensing the danger, the man jumps back defensively. <laughs> this is it? This is my chance! My hand is already shaking violently from holding strong-willed mana for so long. While the man is still in midair, I set the mana free. Amplify! The gravity around him increases tenfold, pulling him to the floor with an insane amount of force. Yet, the giant reacts with equally insane reflexes, managing to right himself well enough to land on his right foot and the left knee. He absorbs the whole impact of my attack, simply by being so tough. My gravity attack amounts to little more than a distraction for this monster. However, when you're fighting against a similarly crazy monster, even a small distraction can prove extremely fatal. When the man looks up, the female devil is already towering over him, a hand on his head, her empty cold eyes, peering deep into the man's eyes, as though it were piercing his soul, like a grim messenger, come to deliver ultimate judgment. Her eyes are empty, as empty as the great black void of the death sentence she holds in her hand. But then, this grim reaper smiles, a devilish smile. It feels like this moment is frozen in time, but the man would only need a moment to escape. In fact, this moment, like every one before it, is gone before it's begun. Summon! <laughs> At that distance, it is impossible to avoid the attack, no matter how good a magician the beastly man is. After a grandiloquent display of high-level magic, the battle ironically concludes with fire, the most basic of basic courage magic. It is simple, but effective. A simple hellfire. 
the giant falls. All his strength burnt away in the fire. A lesser man would have died. This man is only unconscious. Impressive. Frederick! Godwin. Looking at Frederick and Hendrix again, I see the young lord getting ready to attack. Die, you scum! Well, thanks for going through all the trouble, guys. How nice of you to do all this for poor, defenseless me. Uh, let's stop, okay? You know what, Franz? Why don't we continue from where we left off? Let's fight for real this time. I want to know how strong you really are. Fine. As long as I have my magic, everything will be fine. Let's do a project! 